Vincent Racaniello. I'm professor of microbiology and immunology at Columbia University, which is in New York City. I'm also Earth's virology professor, which means that I like to teach virology to the world. And I started as a PhD student years ago, interested in viruses. I got more and more interested. I did a postdoc with David Baltimore shortly after he won his Nobel Prize. Uh, and then in 1982, I went to Columbia University, was lucky enough to start my own lab, and I've been there ever since, working on viruses, teaching, writing about viruses, more recently doing podcasts and videos, because I think everybody needs to know about viruses. They're just the coolest things on the planet. Well, let's just say that today in the U.S. we have an outbreak of measles. This is an infection that can be completely prevented by vaccination. And there are a lot of people in this country who don't want the vaccine. They don't think it's safe. They have all these reasons not to. They are running the dialogue. It's an anti-science, anti-fact dialogue. And the scientists are silent. That's just one example. Climate change is another. Scientists need to get out there and have their voices heard. And there are a lot of scientists in the world, and if they all spoke up and communicated even a little bit, they would drown out the naysayers, the anti-science naysayers. So that's just one reason I think scientists need to communicate. And 10 years ago, I started communicating because I knew that we had to do this. I started by actually writing a textbook. I got involved in a textbook called Principles of Virology with a team of virologists, and it was written in a different way where we focused on principles, not specific viruses. So I had to learn about a lot of different viruses. And after that experience, I knew a lot about many, many more viruses than I ever had in my whole career. So I decided to start blogging. Back, that was back in 2006. Blogging was already becoming easy. And I said, this would be perfect. I take excerpts from the book and just put them on the blog. And I started doing that and I was amazed that people started reading and they started commenting and started asking questions. And I'm still doing that to this day. I write one post a week and we get hundreds of thousands of visitors every month who are curious about viruses. Uh, and then I started podcasting. I was listening to podcasts on my long commute and I thought, what, what, what a cool thing it would be to make a virology podcast, how nerdy and geeky. But I said, well, let me try it. Let me do an experiment. So I got one of my Columbia colleagues and we started This Week in Virology 10 years ago. I didn't think anyone would listen. Today, it's still going. We are on our 553rd episode and we have 10 to 20,000 steady listeners. And after that, I started doing other podcasts. Now we have five podcasts in all. I got into video, I dabbled in short videos, and then I started teaching a virology course to undergraduates and I recorded all the lectures. I put them on YouTube and they get tens of thousands of views. So there is clearly an interest in viruses from people out there and I just want to satisfy it. It's the most satisfying thing I can possibly be doing is to inspire other people. Open science in, in virology can push the field forward because you put your data online, other people could use it and maybe gain insights that you haven't. To think that you can do everything is totally against the whole philosophy of science. But that's the way science has been run for many, many years. We think we can do it all and you know our egos are driven by it and so forth. But it's really not for you. It's not about the scientists. It's about finding answers to questions and letting humanity benefit from it. So if you put your data out there, other people can work with it in ways you may not have thought about to come up with new therapies, new treatments, a new understanding of diseases, because in the end, it's all about helping humanity. Mm -hmm.